H. G. Wells, The Invisible Man, a reading for you by Ed French. Chapter 17. Dr. Kemp's Visitor. I am Griffin. I am Griffin of University College, and I have made myself invisible. I am just an ordinary man, a man you have known, made invisible. Griffin, said Kemp. Griffin, answered the voice. Griffin, a younger student, almost an albino, six feet high and broad, with a pink and white face and red eyes, who won the medal for chemistry. I am confused, said Kemp. My brain is rioting. What has this to do with Griffin? I am Griffin. Kemp thought. It's horrible, he said. But what devilry must happen to make a man invisible? It's no devilry. It's a process sane and intelligible enough. It's horrible, said Kemp. How on earth? It's horrible enough. But I'm wounded and in pain and tired. Great God, Kemp! You're a man. Take it steady. Give me some food and drink and let me sit down here. Kemp stared at the bandage as it moved across the room, then saw a basket chair dragged across the floor and come to rest near the bed. It creaked, and the seat was depressed to the quarter of an inch or so. He rubbed his eyes and felt his neck again. "'This beats ghosts,' he said, and laughed stupidly. "'That's better. Thank heaven you're getting sensible.' "'Or silly,' said Kemp, and knuckled his eyes. Give me some whiskey. I'm near dead. It didn't feel so. Where are you? If I get up, shall I run into you? There. All right. Whiskey? Here. Where shall I give it to you? The chair creaked, and Kemp felt the glass drawn away from him. He let go by an effort. His instinct was all against it. It came to rest poised twenty inches above the front edge of the seat of the chair. He stared at it in infinite perplexity. This is, this must be hypnotism. You have suggested you are invisible. Nonsense, said the voice. It's frantic. Listen to me. I demonstrated conclusively this morning, began Kemp, that invisibility... Never mind what you've demonstrated. I'm starving, said the voice. The night is chilly to a man without clothes. Food, said Kemp. The tumbler of whiskey tilted itself. Yes said the invisible man, wrapping it down. Have you a dressing gown? Kemp made some exclamation in an undertone. He walked to a wardrobe and produced a robe of dingy scarlet. This do? he asked. It was taken from him. It hung limp for a moment in midair, fluttered weirdly, stood full and decorous, buttoning itself, and sat down in his chair. Drawers, socks, slippers would be a comfort, said the unseen, curtly. And food? Anything but... This is the, the insanest thing I ever was in in my life. He turned out his drawers for the articles and then went downstairs to ransack his larder. He came back with some cold cutlets and bread, pulled up a light table, and placed them before his guest. Never mind knives, said his visitor, and a cutlet hung in midair with a sound of gnawing. Invisible, said Kemp, and sat down on a bedroom chair. I always like to get something about me before I eat said the invisible man, with a full mouth, eating greedily. Queer fancy. I suppose that wrist is all right, said Kemp. Trust me, said the invisible man. Of all the strange and wonderful... Exactly. But it's odd that I should blunder into your house to get my bandaging. My first stroke of luck. Anyhow, I meant to sleep in this house tonight. You must stand that. It's a filthy nuisance, my blood showing, isn't it? Quite a clot over there. Gets visible as it coagulates, I see. It's only the living tissue I've changed. And only for as long as I'm alive. I've been in this house three hours. But how's it done? began Kemp in a tone of exasperation. Confound it, the whole business. It's unreasonable from beginning to end. Quite reasonable, said the invisible man. Perfectly reasonable. He reached over and secured the whiskey bottle. Kemp stared at the devouring dressing gown. 
a ray of candlelight penetrating a torn patch in the right shoulder made a triangle of light under the left ribs. What were the shots? he asked. How did the shooting begin? There was a real fool of a man, a sort of confederate of mine, curse him, who tried to steal my money, has done so. Is he invisible too? No. No. Well? But can't I have some more to eat before I tell you all that? I'm hungry, in pain, and you want me to tell stories. Kemp got up. You didn't do any shooting, he asked. Not me, said his visitor. Some fool I'd never seen fired at random. A lot of them got scared. They all got scared at me. Curse them, I say. I want more to eat than this, Kemp. I'll see what there is to eat downstairs, said Kemp. Not much, I'm afraid. After he had done eating, and he made a heavy meal, the invisible man demanded a cigar. He bit the end savagely before Kemp could find a knife, and cursed when the outer leaf loosened. It was strange to see him smoking. His mouth and throat, pharynx and nares, became visible as a sort of whirling smoke cast. This blessed gift of smoking, he said, and puffed vigorously. I'm lucky to have fallen upon you, Kemp. You must help me. Fancy tumbling on you just now. I'm in a devilish scrape. I've been mad, I think. The things I have been through. But we will do things yet. Let me tell you. He helped himself to more whiskey and soda. Kemp got up, looked about him, and fetched a glass from his spare room. It's wild, but I suppose I may drink. You haven't changed much, Kemp. These dozen years? You fair men don't. Cool and methodical after the first collapse. I must tell you, we will work together. But how was it all done? said Kemp. And how did you get like this? For God's sake, let me smoke in peace for a while. And then I will begin to tell you. But the story was not told that night. The invisible man's wrist was growing painful. He was feverish, exhausted, and his mind came round to brood upon his chase down the hill and the struggle about the inn. He spoke in fragments of marvel. He smoked faster. His voice grew angry. Kemp tried to gather what he could. He was afraid of me. I could see that he was afraid of me, said the invisible man many times over. He meant to give me the slip. He was always casting about. What a fool I was. The cur. I should have killed him. Where did you get the money? asked Kemp abruptly. The invisible man was silent for a space. I can't tell you tonight, he said. He groaned suddenly and leant forward, supporting his invisible head on invisible hands. Kemp, he said, I've had no sleep for near three days, except a couple of doses of an hour or so. I must sleep soon. Well, have my room, have this room. But how can I sleep? If I sleep, he will get away. Oh, what does it matter? What's the shot wound? asked Kemp abruptly. Nothing. Nothing. Scratch and blood. Oh, God, how I want sleep. Why not? The invisible man appeared to be regarding Kemp. Because I have a particular objection to being caught by my fellow men, he said slowly. Kemp started. <laughs> Fool that I am, said the invisible man, striking the table smartly. I've put the idea into your head. <laughs>